Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Brandon Clements, and welcome back to part two of our uh, VFX shot that we did for Lazarus. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D, and we can check out our project where we left off from last time. So um, everything looks pretty good here. We have a pretty solid track. So I'm going to go up to uh, Render and Make Preview, and I'm just going to do a hardware preview, all frames. Uh, the size is fine, 24 uh, you know, frames per second. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Uh, what this is going to do is just give us a preview that's kind of loaded up into the picture viewer so that we can um, see exactly how solid the track is. OK, so it's OK that it that the um, resolution is really small, but um, this will give us um, some time to kind of scrub and cache these frames and then we can like play them back and see how well it looks. And um, I think we're going to be pretty good. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and drop some objects into the scene. So we need to start shaping our mug. So we're going to go ahead and drop in a cylinder. It's going to be really tall or uh, really big. So we just need to kind of make it smaller. Let's adjust the height. As you can see from our position constraint, uh, it's dropping it there onto the corner of that book. So let's go ahead and hide the cylinder and let's uh, drop in a cube. And let's do the same thing. Let's kind of shrink the size of the cube. Um, I believe I said that the vector was 22 centimeters, so that should be the size of the book. And then let's go ahead and just pull down the size or the size in the Y. Okay, and then in the Z, of course. Let's pull that down. So a lot of this is going to be uh, finessing, and we can just kind of put this into place. If we hit N G on the keyboard, let's see N G. There we go. Uh, we can go into wireframe mode, so we can kind of shift this around. I'm going to push it over in the X, and then let's push it down in the Y. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We can come over and adjust the Z. Um, so right now, the Z is obviously bigger than the X, and uh, you know we can guess that this book isn't going to be that way. So uh, we also have the book turned a little bit as well, so um, you know we can... Uh, let's go ahead and collapse this object and then we can use our uh, rotate tool to kind of rotate that into place and get that kind of um, square there and I'm just kind of lining this up maybe we can stretch it a little bit in the X okay so I think that's gonna be pretty good for our book lining up I know it's probably hard to tell on the screen capture software uh, but we're looking pretty good even you know we could get this perfect if we beveled the edge out and made it kind of rounded but this is just kind of gonna be uh, a placement object for us so we can rename it uh, book let's go ahead and hide it for a second and then we can um, work with the cylinder so we need to have the cylinder I'm gonna go ahead and put it at eight rotation segments uh, I'll turn the caps off we don't need caps on it right now and uh, I change my display by hitting N and B to Garage Shading with Lines. And let's go ahead and move this. Uh, a quick trick before we do that, we can say the height. We can copy this value and then uh, paste it and then divide it by 2 in the Y. And we can get it sitting on the floor. And then we can go ahead, when we collapse, we can drop the Y here to the floor. Okay, so now we know that it's sitting right on the book. And um, if we actually jump out of the camera, we can see that it's right in the middle. So I'm guessing that Evan and the crew had probably put it right in the middle of the book. So that will be good for us to go ahead and start adjusting the size of the, uh, of the glass, of the mug. Okay, so uh, I, I'm going to do this in wireframe. I just find it a lot easier to do in wireframe. We're going to go over to our rectangle selection. We're going to uncheck only select visible elements so that we can go all the way through and then just start lining up these points. So this can get kind of boring, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's very, it's very important that we go ahead and try to match this as best that we can. Okay. So, uh, it looks like maybe, uh, in perspective, that we may have to bring this a little bit to the front and then um, over to 
the X. The only reason I was able to know that was because it was sitting right on top of the book and we still didn't have that edge on the very bottom of the rim. Okay, so we need to try to get this as close as possible. But I think that's going to be fine. We can move this up and try to scale it a little bit more. And, um, you know, in the real world, we're not going to get as perfect with computer graphics, of course. You know, like when we draw all of this stuff, it's going to be so perfect mathematically that, you know, there's hardly anything out there that, that's going to be that perfect. So um, don't be freaked out if it's not lining up correctly. I'm just using the knife tool by hitting MK and changing this to loop uh, to add some more slices into our... Um, cylinder and then I'm just grabbing the loop by double clicking in edge mode and scaling it down proportionally to the image so I'm getting something pretty close uh, another cool thing we can hit UB on the keyboard and select a ring and then I can right click and I can say connect where are we at connect points and edges there we go and then once we have that we can again hit the space bar tap the space bar to select the edge there in the middle and kind of scale it out so um, you know once you get used to the shortcuts you can go and kind of fly through this pretty quickly and scale it up a lot of people don't um, talk well about the modeling tools in, in Cinema 4D but uh, I think they're pretty good they get the job done they're not like uh, super amazing, but they're not really that bad either. Not as bad as people make them out to be, especially on forums and stuff. There's a lot of people that hate Cinema 4D modeling tools, but uh, like I said, they can get the job done. Uh, let's go ahead and move this up to like the rim. So uh, sometimes it's kind of hard in this perspective view to match it exactly, uh, but I think we'll get pretty close by saying somewhere around there and you can see that I shifted it in the X again like I said it's not going to be perfect we're matching perspective we're using a computer of course so um, you know some of our edges are going to be a little too straight a little too perfect but as long as we get really close to the boundaries of this it's going to match really nice with our shot so just trying to get as close as I can. Like I said, I know this is pretty boring, but I don't want to leave any of this out for you guys to actually see. Um, you can always skip ahead. That's the greatest thing about YouTube is that um, if you know what I'm doing here, you can, of course, just go right ahead and see the result or anything in between. So I'm going to keep shaping this glass a little bit more um, to the boundaries of the image. I think we're getting pretty close. Um, may scale this up just a little bit to make it a little smoother. Um, and then let's come down and probably add another loop here and make this a lot more rounded as this comes up. Okay, so this is kind of the rough rudimentary uh, mug. Okay, so uh, not too bad. We probably want to go ahead and divide this evenly. So let's add another um, edge loop in here and kind of scale it just a little bit. Um, but I think we're looking pretty good. Let's scale this a little bit out. Okay, so in no time at all you can see that I was able to get this looking pretty pretty good. So let's hit MS on the keyboard to bevel and we can kind of bevel this out a little bit more and then adjust the loops if we need to. So I may take this one ring and just kind of scale it out just a little bit more and uh, you can go through and depending on the object that you're tracking I would like to provide these scene files for you guys but of course I'm not gonna do that for my clients uh, I don't own the footage so uh, I just worked on the shot so um, whatever you guys are using this tutorial or video as a reference to um, just try to understand what I'm what I'm doing here and then uh, try to match that in your project just think about the principles rather than the uh, the actual steps that I'm taking here okay so, yeah, I think this is fine for the glass. Uh, what's the next thing we can do? Uh, well, we need to actually make sure that this top part, it's really important to us. We want to make sure that we're adding that gold leaf uh, back into the, uh, to the top part. That was something that the client really had to have. So um, let's go in and let's kind of just put that there. That's going to be our ring for our gold leaf and uh, we'll add another edge right beneath it if we do end up subdividing this. 
Okay, so we're going to do a material selection around there to make this gold. Um, yeah, book, mug, we got those. Let's go ahead. I'm going to cheat, and I'm actually going to go over to my other project, and I'm going to take both of these materials and uh, talk about them with you guys in this scene, okay? So we'll run through these exactly as if we were creating them again from scratch. Um, I'm going to select the actual uh, gold leaf kind of loop selection here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna apply and then I'm gonna go up into my selection invert and then I'm gonna apply the glass okay you can see I accidentally had both of those selected my bad let's just deselect apply invert my selection and then right click apply and you can see there we get the polygon selection tags with the materials applied to the to the uh, selection tags okay so let's look at the gold. Um, of course, you know if you're not familiar to PBR materials, um, maybe you should go back and watch some of the other videos on our channel that talk more about this. But uh, I'm going to run through this really quickly. Diffuse is going to be completely black because it's a metallic surface. Uh, our tint is actually going to come from the specular channel. You can see that I have a mixed channel of uh, a little bit of noise that's set to chips. So this is a um, octane noise. It's right, let's see, where are we at? Noise right there. And then I set, here's my settings to chips. Uh, basically, I have a UV transform node in here that's just scaling it down, okay? So um, you can create this very easily and it's just scaled really low. And then I'm changing the color of the noise to this um, gold type texture and then um, this really desaturated bright kind of gold. So. Uh, you get variations of color in the specular channel, and that's using a mixed texture. The roughness uh, is a, an image that I have, this GW Metal. This is from Grant Warwick, um, and we're actually using this uh, clamped to 0.03 and 0.4, so it's never going under or over these values. If we go down to the let's see the index I have it set all the way up uh, because I want this to be very metallic looking um, and this is a metallic surface so let's look at the glass what do I have here um, now I don't actually need to recreate the glass itself it's just going to be a uh, basically like a stamp of the logo okay so I went into the uh, Photoshop document and just extracted this layer from the client um, it's just a mixed texture, and I'm mix mixing it with, um, again, the uh, metallic kind of gold that I got from this texture over here. And it's being mixed with uh, just a, a slight variation of both of these, okay, in terms of color. Um, and then in the roughness, I'm using a clamp. Again, um, it's pretty much the same setup as the gold here what I just had shown and the opacity I have a black and white um, emblem so what is black will stay and what is white will oh, I'm sorry I have this invert so uh, what is black was cut out and what was white is staying but I just uh, swapped the invert here because I was using this um, as something else okay or maybe I just guessed wrong in Photoshop I'm not sure which but anyways you can easily just switch this around if it's not previewing how you want it to and then again all the way up to eight because this needs to be uh, a gold metallic type of look okay so uh, a cool thing in cinema is that we can go to the motion tracker and we can come to the footage and we can say create background object and this will help us actually um, render this into the uh, live viewer so if I go to octane octane settings and then go to path tracing uh, I can set this down to a preview, so let's go ahead and do that. Just kind of preview settings. I'm just flying through here. Uh, what I need to have on is the alpha channel. This is very important. I need the alpha channel on, and I'm going to turn off the keep environment. Um, let's go ahead and save. And if I go into, let's see, Octane user, I'm going to add a HDR environment, and I'm going to navigate to the one that I used in the uh, other project actually let me go ahead and delete and again I'm gonna cheat I know I'm bad but I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the octane sky and just reuse this exactly how it was 
um, in the in the original client project. So what it is is just a really low power, and this is uh, a picture of my office. Uh, so you guys can download this on our Gumroad. I'll leave a link in the description uh, to our Gumroad page, but you can download this. Uh, feel free to uh, leave some support if you actually like it and use it for stuff. Uh, we couldn't capture an HDR of this um, of this room that they shot it in, so this has the same type of color temperature. It's really warm, um, and this is my office here in Louisville. So uh, it's a pretty cool HDR, and we just threw that in there. And let's see if we can see anything of value in our live viewer. So sometimes it will come in like all stretched and squashed and, and all that jazz. Um, so what we need to do is just, let's just uh, pop it out and let's kind of make it to the dimensions that it needs to be. Okay, and then finally we got it working. Uh, so we can see that uh, maybe the top rim isn't, um, you know, as level as we need it to be. Uh, we're going to have to UV the glass so that we get the emblem to sit facing the camera correctly. Uh, but everything else looks to be um, pretty good. Of course, we need to have a matte, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a matte shader on the book to kind of use it as a holdout and maybe adjust the rotation of this. So we'll do all that in the next lesson. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this by leaving a like on the video. And if you have any questions about what I've done, please leave it in the comment section below. Like I said, next time we're going to make this look uh, really nice. We'll start adding lights and uh, start shaping up the scene so that we can make this look as if the glass already had all the gold pieces on it. So thanks a lot. Definitely check out the HDR. Um, if you like it, go ahead and leave us some support. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot and take care.